These masks were sent to me for testing by Ergami. I've got a medium and a large. Uh, they're one of the few filtering face piece respirators that comes in sizes. Um, a lot of them don't, and sizing is really important, so that is a good feature. But it also makes it a little harder to order a mask because uh, you're not necessarily sure what size to order. And that can be expensive because this is a $30 mask I'm holding here. So you kind of want to get it right on the first try. They do have some uh, hints on the sizing. Um, I was a bit in between sizes, so I've got both of these to give a try. The uh, real important thing, though, is does it work well? Let's take a look at the mask itself first. So on the inside, we've got this filter layer here. These are the pleats where uh, the mask is gathered together and the head strap or ear loops, if you get the ear loop version, uh, are held together. Uh, these straps, they've got an instructional video on how to adjust the length of these straps and also how to loosen them up so that you can let these uh, bellows be a little bit wider to adjust the fit a little bit. And there's some other tricks that they have as well. So they have more fit instructions than most masks, uh, which is a good thing, uh, good support. But other masks don't necessarily need as many adjustments. So there's trade-offs. This innovative mask is both, well, it's got a lot of abilities that other masks don't, but it's also maybe a little bit fussier uh, as well. Well, the first thing I did when I got these masks to assess how well they fit was try them on right out of the box. And out of the box, I could feel that this large size was leaking on me at the nose bridge. So I tried tightening up the tension on the top strap. And they have instructions uh, on uh, the web, actually on YouTube, on how to do that, uh, because these straps uh, go down and then up and around. So they have to be pulled a couple of different times and they can tell you how to do that. Now, adjusting the tension didn't seem to make a whole lot of difference. So I switched to the medium mask and that feels like it fits me a little bit better. I also adjusted the strap tension. Now to give you a reference for how much I adjusted it, I wanted a reference, well, to compare it to my other masks. So to do that, uh, I got a mask that fits me very well. It's also a very lightweight mask. I put the mask on and then using a measuring tape, um, I measured the straps distance on uh, my face. And uh, with this mask, the distance is 18 inches. And with this mask, it's 20. And uh, that will make a difference, and you'll see why, because we're going to take a scale and actually just go ahead and uh, measure that distance. And uh, half of 18 is going to be 9, so we'll measure out to 9 inches. So around 278, 280, something like that. Um, it changes as you uh, keep the scale out there. So this one, we're going to measure out to uh, 10 inches because that's half of 20. So I've got these a little tighter, um, not, not too much tighter, um, about 350. So the Aura straps on the 92, 9205 are not the strongest, um, tightest straps of any of my masks. So, 350 is uh, probably a good ballpark to start with. Now, you don't have to do that. Just tighten them until they feel comfortable. But I kind of like having the measurements behind mine. So having done that, let's go ahead and start setting up the actual test. All right, I've got the mask on, and we're doing an N95 test. I'm going to hold this. Uh, this hose can put artificial um, tensions on the mask that it wouldn't have under normal circumstances. There's no way the center of this mask would get distorted uh, like it will from this tube if I don't hold it. So that wouldn't be a good representation of uh, anything, really. It's not a force that would normally apply to the mask. So we want to minimize that by holding the mask to get a representative test and not have the test instrument interfere with it. So, uh, so far we're actually getting results uh, that are better than I expected um, now that I've tightened the, the strap uh, in back. And it's doing pretty well considering I'm talking. So right now it's uh, 97, 117. Let's go ahead and do an actual fit test.
Okay, uh, and overall pass uh, with a plus 200 uh, fit factor. Well, after doing the test, I have to say I'm impressed. Uh, I wasn't sure what to expect, but the uh, Aragami passed on me in the medium size in every single exercise. Um, and that doesn't always happen. And what impressed me about that is that I didn't know if these flat uh, folds could create a seal against your skin. Now, I did crank these um, straps up pretty tight to make sure that I got a good fit uh, to give this a fair shake. Now, to compare, I'm going to do an N99 or N95 mode test of the large size. I'm just going to do a single static fit test. Um, but I want to know if that larger size, if that nose bridge distance uh, makes a difference. These masks are actually pretty similar in height, but they seem to be of uh, different diameters. Um, so I don't know exactly what makes them different um, other than I felt a leak with this one. So let's give that a try. All right, I've got the um, large mask on and um, I've secured it as best I can uh, by tightening these straps. And I can still feel a little bit of a leak. We'll see how much that accounts uh, in this N95 test. I'm just gonna do the best case scenario and not the full eight exercise test. Okay. All right, so um, 72, that is better than I thought it would be because I could feel a tiny leak here uh, at the bridge of my nose sometimes. Um, still protective, but not as protective as we would like it to be. So fit is important with these masks. All right, now that we've gone through all of that, I think the lesson is, is that fit's very individual. But if you don't have a machine, is there a way that you can actually tell whether the mask works for you? Because it's really subtle and it's hard to tell just by feel. Uh, I couldn't be certain. Well, without a fancy machine, there is a way you can tell whether the mask fits you. And that's using uh, one of these. This is just an ordinary nebulizer, probably the world's ugliest nebulizer. And you can get 3M fit test solution that contains something you can taste if it gets into your mask. So you can get sweet solution that uses saccharin or you can get a bitter solution that uses Bitrex. And there are instructions on the internet um, I'll link to some of those uh, and you can check those out. And the key to this is that you are breathing through your mouth. You are tasting this solution if it gets into your mask. Uh, it's not a scent. There are particles that are actually going to um, get inside your mask if it leaks, but they're too big to go through the filter media. So you're not gonna taste it through the filter only if it gets inside the mask. And uh, Different ones of these can be had. Uh, this is a medical nebulizer. Sometimes they're as cheap as $20 or $30. And there are also other types of uh, misters, but they have to be really fine misters, like a, an ultrasonic nano mister. Those can be cheap as well. And those are listed in some of the internet instructions. Also, uh, there are some great people doing fit testing online on Twitter and elsewhere, creating databases of masks that work well for more than one person. Keep in mind, fit is very individual. so. If it fits them, it still might not fit you. But if you see masks that are common among all those lists, that's a good chance that that means that mask uh, has a better chance of fitting you. But even masks that don't fit them might fit you. And that's why it's important uh, to be able to fit test at home if you can. And one of these nebulizers can help make sure that you're getting individual fit, regardless of whether a mask fits someone else.